Hi, I'm Stephanie Vecchio of the Middle Country Public Library, and I'd like to welcome you to episode 26 of our History Bite series. Today, we will discuss Patsy Takamoto Mink, who was the first woman of color elected to Congress and the first Asian American woman to serve in the House. She served as a representative of Territorial Hawaii, State Senator of Hawaii, and for over two decades as the representative of Hawaii's second congressional district. She led a life of service. Patsy Mink was born in Hawaii Territory on December 6, 1927, to Sumatsu Takamoto, a civil engineer, and Mitama Tateyama Takamoto, and was one of two children. Mink was a tremendously accomplished student. She was the class president and valedictorian of her high school. She went on to attend Wilson College in Chambersburg, Pennsylvania, where she unfortunately faced strong racial discrimination, and as a result, transferred to the University of Nebraska at Lincoln, graduating with a BA in zoology. She also received a bachelor's in chemistry from the University of Hawaii in 1948. Around that time, Mink was diagnosed with a thyroid condition that required surgery. Thankfully, she recovered fine. After graduating with her bachelor's, Mink originally planned to pursue a medical degree, but turned to law school after several schools turned down her application. She went on to study law at the University of Chicago Law School. It was there that she met her future husband, John Mink, while playing a game of bridge. The two married and had a daughter, Gwendolyn. A year after giving birth, Mink moved back to Hawaii with her family to pursue a law career. Once settled back in Hawaii, Mink registered for the bar exam to be able to practice law in the territory. Unfortunately, even after she passed the bar, she was unable to find a job because of her interracial marriage. She decided to start her own practice instead, and also founded the Oahu Young Democrats in 1954. She became the first Japanese-American woman to practice law in her home state of Hawaii and worked as an attorney for the Territorial House of Representatives in 1955. Mink won election to that chamber in 1956 and 1958 before winning a seat in the Territorial Senate, where she served from 1958 to 1959. When Hawaii became a state in 1959, Mink quickly began campaigning to be elected as a congresswoman. Her campaign was unsuccessful, and she continued to focus on her legal career, but returned to politics in 1962 when she won a seat in the Hawaii State Senate, where she served from 1962 to 1964 and eventually chaired the Education Committee. She continued to campaign for a seat in the U.S. Congress even after the Democratic Party decided to support another candidate. In 1964, a second position was created in the U.S. House of Representatives. With the help of her husband, several unpaid volunteers, and a grassroots campaign with many small contributions, Mink won a seat in the U.S. House of Representatives, making her the first Asian American woman to serve in Congress. As a Congresswoman, Mink fought for gender and racial equality, affordable child care, bilingual education, and became a strong supporter of Title IX. She was one of the authors and sponsors of the Title IX law that stated, No person in the United States shall, on the basis of sex, be excluded from participation in, be denied the benefits of, or be subjected to discrimination under any education program or activity receiving federal financial assistance. As the Title IX was enforced, many supporters of public school men's sports programs objected to it, believing that their funding was being cut in favor of women's sports under the new statute. In 1975, opponents filed an amendment to the Appropriations Bill for the Department of Health, Education, and Welfare that would exempt school athletics from Title IX. Despite heavy lobbying by Mink, 
the amendment survived the House version of the bill. After the Senate struck the amendment in conference, the House faced a tight vote on whether to stand by its position. Just before voting, Mink received an emergency call informing her that her daughter had been in a life-threatening car accident in New York. Mink immediately went to be with her daughter while the voting commenced, ultimately ending in a narrow 212 to 211 victory for the Title IX opponents. When newspapers characterized Mink's tearful exit as a result of the vote, her allies leapt to her defense. Speaker Carl Albert of Oklahoma and Representative Daniel John Flood of Pennsylvania explained the circumstances of Mink's absence the following day, and the House voted to recede and concur with the Senate with Mink in attendance. Mink's daughter and Title IX survived. While Mink worked in Washington, D.C., she also traveled back to Hawaii every other week to make sure she was connected to the issues and concerns of the Hawaiian people. She successfully served on many committees while in Congress, including the Committee on Education and Labor, Committee on Interior and Insular Affairs, and the Budget Committee. Through these committees, Mink was able to voice the concerns of groups that were discriminated against. In 1974, she was able to pass the Women's Educational Equity Act to promote gender equality in schools. The act provided $30 million a year in educational funds for programs to promote gender equity in schools, to increase educational and job opportunities for women, and to excise gender stereotypes from textbooks and the school curricula. Mink also fought to preserve family reunification provisions in several proposed immigration reform bills and worked to educate Americans about the internment of Japanese Americans during World War II, an issue that is still relevant to this day. As a member of the Interior and Insular Affairs Committee, she supported the economic and political development of the trust territory of the Pacific Islands. As a chair of the Subcommittee on Mines and Mining, she helped author the landmark Surface Mining Control and Reclamation Act of 1975, and in the following year helped to pass a major overhaul of the Mineral Leasing Act of 1920. The House failed to override President Gerald Ford's veto of the Surface Mining Control and Reclamation Act, though a similar measure was eventually signed into law in 1977. Education was always at the forefront of Mink's work. Among the education acts she introduced or sponsored in the U.S. House were the first child care bill and legislation establishing bilingual education, student loans, special education, professional sabbaticals for teachers, and the Head Start program. Starting in 1967, she also put significant effort into passing a bill to institute a national daycare system to support low-income households. The Comprehensive Child Development Act was folded into the Economic Opportunity Act in 1971, but it failed to become law in part because opponents objected that it offered too many incentives for mothers to work outside the home and that it promoted a communal approach to rearing children. Through the Economic Opportunity Act passed both houses of Congress, President Nixon vetoed it in December 1971. Mink later called the bill's failure one of the real disappointments of her political career. Mink would always stick to and fight for her core beliefs, even when she did not have the support of her party, or possibly even some of her constituents. She often found herself clashing with her party, particularly during the Vietnam War. In September 1967, she refused to support President Johnson's request for an income tax increase because she feared that the new revenues would be used for military action rather than the expansion of social programs. In April 1972, she co-sponsored Massachusetts Representative Michael Joseph Harrington's concurrent resolution calling for an immediate termination of military activity in Vietnam. Her views clashed with those of the three other members of the Hawaii Congressional Delegation, as well as with some of the members of her Hawaii community. 
a state with a heavy military presence. Years later, however, Mink recalled, It was such a horrible thought to have this war that it really made no difference to me that I had a military constituency. It was a case of living up to my own views and my own conscience. If I was defeated for it, that's the way it had to be. There was no way in which I could compromise my views on how I felt about it. After passing up a re-election bid in 1976, in order to run a failed campaign for a seat in the Senate, Mink remained active in politics and was elected to the Hawaii City Council and attempted to run for governor and mayor in Hawaii. During this time, she said, Life is not based on being an elected politician. Politics is a constant involvement in the day-to-day -day working of society as a whole, one part of which is government. In 1990, Mink returned to Congress and remained there for several years, continuing to champion many important causes. She advocated for a universal health care plan that would allow people of all economic backgrounds to receive medical treatment. Mink combined two of her long-standing interests when she co-sponsored the Gender Equity Act in 1993. Disturbed that gender discrimination persisted in the United States 20 years after the passage of Title IX, Mink asserted that targeting gender bias in elementary and secondary education would help reduce inequalities between the sexes. In May 1994, Mink joined Representative Norman Y. Mineta of California and other colleagues in forming the Congressional Asian Pacific American Caucus. Mink won election as chairwoman of the caucus. When Mineta resigned from Congress the following year, and she served in that capacity, through 1997. On September 28, 2002, after a month-long hospitalization with pneumonia, Patsy Mink died in Honolulu, Hawaii. Her name remained on the November ballot and she was re-elected by a wide margin. Democrat Ed Case defeated Patsy Mink's husband and more than 30 other candidates in the special election to succeed her. After her death, the Title IX law was renamed the Patsy T. Mink Equal Opportunity in Education Act. For over four decades, Mink championed the rights of immigrants, minorities, women, and children, and worked to eradicate the kind of discrimination she had faced in her life, known for her integrity, determination, tenacity, and honesty. She is recognized as the major mover of Title IX, the legislation that brought academic and athletic equity to American educational institutions. She was a strong environmental advocate and worked tirelessly on energy policy issues of regional, national, and global impact. Mink's tireless and trailblazing work will never be forgotten. I'd like to thank you all for joining us for today's episode. If you have enjoyed it, click like, and if you watched on YouTube, click subscribe. Thanks so much, and we'll see you all next time.